Right now, gang, we want to focus on kind of the middle tier. Uh, when we talk about performance and scale, uh, the middle tier of performance and scale is what we have with our centralized set of devices, uh, and potentially the lower scale there of what we see in our FlexConnect focused devices. Really, we see four different deployment models if we want to break it down. You've got FlexConnect for the branch office, the centralized model that we tend to focus on, uh, the Mesh Connect, very interesting solution designed to allow for access points to mesh with each other rather than having to have a dedicated connection, uh, and then the Office Extend for our telecommuters. So some very powerful uh, components that are associated with support through the Air OS. So remember, the Air OS has been the operating system for access points and for wireless LAN controllers in Cisco for quite a while. Uh, it's only the 5760 wireless LAN controller that uses the iOS XE. All the others are using Air OS. And we're going to get essentially various different support once again for a certain number of clients, certain number of access points, certain amount of power behind it. And you'll notice that things like our virtual wireless LAN controllers and the Flex 7500 are, I mean, what are they designed for? They're designed for things like the Flex Connect solutions. So uh, not all devices or all instances are going to support all the different deployment models that are possible. We see GUI and client interfaces, and I'd say that AeroS has less uh, of an operational base devoted to the CLI as the iOS does, see a lot more GUI configuration done. But again, we can do it in both ways and we can work with those uh, saved configurations in order to set things up and keep them consistent. So let's take a look at some of these uh, different devices. At uh, one level here, we see the 2500 with our centralized configuration, kind of our, our base level. Uh, but notice the base level supports 75 access points and 1,000 clients. Not bad. A uh, gigabit per second throughput with four one gigabit Ethernet ports with a couple supporting power over Ethernet. Standalone small form factor appliance. Very straightforward to use. Uh, can support a, a decent uh, set of devices. You'll notice it's not a rack mounted device. It's just designed to uh, sit there as a small operational box. Give me a central point of management. If I want to build out from there, then I might move to the uh, 5500 series, maybe a 5508 or a 5520. And this supports 500 access points, 7,000 clients. Uh, it's got eight gigabits per second of throughput with eight one gig ethernet ports with link aggregation available now. Okay, that's good stuff. And this is designed to either be a standalone or a rack mountable appliance, depending on what I'm purchasing. So centralized device, AeroS based wireless LAN controller. This is, uh, this is a very commonly deployed uh, level of device. Now for the branch office, we have specifically the Flex 7500 series. And so we see sports up to 6,000 branch offices uh, with 100 access points per branch. So really designed for aggregation. Not as much about the very specific high performance because there's an expectation of latency and delay, but of uh, having enough memory and enough processor power to be able to handle juggling all those various connections in one place. 6,000 access points and 64,000 clients. So for wireless branches with survivability features, right? So uh, if there is a loss of connection, that's okay. We can get back to it when it comes back online and keep moving from that point forward. The 8500 series, powerful device, mid-size to large single site enterprise environment. So we see some of the same levels as what we saw with the uh, Flex 7500 series, but now with the 8500 series, it can function in a centralized way or in a Flex Connect uh, type of environment, stateful access point, uh, where of the clients, has it all in its database, client failover to other devices, redundant 10 gigabit ethernet ports with aggregation, uh, and redundant dual power supplies. So this thing's a beast, right? It's designed to be enterprise level uh, support for this. And then we get to uh, the WISM 2, which is actually a Catalyst 6500 module. Uh, so it's a, it's a blade to integrate in with this. It's not a converged device. It is still a centralized device, but it will fit into the 6500 and provide wireless LAN uh, support and function in a very high speed way. So mid-size to large single side enterprises, 1,000 access points, 15,000 clients. So if I've got a Catalyst 6500 series chassis, this might make sense to drop into it. And I'm getting a very similar, similar level of support as what I might have to something from, let's say, the 5500 series. Uh, again, supports up to seven Cisco WISM2 blades per chassis for scalability. So again, I can have multiple instances of these physical appliances to get what I need. All right, so what am I going to buy? It all depends. 
how many access points, what kind of hardware do I already have, what, do I, what might I want to integrate with, is it going to be localized or branch support that I want, so maybe the 7500 or 8500 series to uh, get the most out of those Flex Connect based situations, concern about network availability and redundancy. Let's take a quick look at what one of these looks like. Okay, so here we are looking at a Cisco 5508 wireless LAN controller. Looking at the back, we see we've got plenty of fans, got our single power supply, power coming in, uh, has an on-off switch, smaller uh, 2504 does not have that. Uh, when we look at the front, again, a whole lot of room for airflow over here. And here we have our eight gigabit uh, interfaces that do support link aggregation. Uh, and then we've got our basic components like uh, we actually have a redundant port waiting for use. Uh, we have a standby port that's kind of an out-of-band management device. And here's our standard console port or uh, available USB console connections so we can establish or can load USB on. Uh, then over here, yep, we've got some uh, the additional USB port here. Here's our plug to make sure that we are uh, safe. Our grounding strap plug is necessary. And like I said, that's, that's about it. So on the outside, there's not a whole lot to connect to. Uh, this is designed to be able to support a good high-speed connection to uh, the switch that is going to be associated with this device. So very powerful um, high-speed connection, not the most powerful, kind of middle-of-the-road device, uh, but kind of a good place to look and see where we're at.